So you want to go to the Lost River, but you don't know which entrance to take, where the entrance is, or if it's even safe. Today I'm going to show you all four locations for the Lost River, how to get there as easy and as safe as possible so you can make the right decision for you. First, we're going to be starting out in the zero point in the safe shallows. And if you're not sure how to get yours or you do not have it yet, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link for my starting guide and how to find your own right up here at the top. The first one we're going to be looking at is the Blood Kelp Trench. It's going to be southwest west. And you're going to put your compass right in the middle. We're going to be going about 800 meters away from zero point. So as you go along, as I have it marked, you will not, you can literally turn around onto your beacon and see how far away you are. So let's carry on. Now I'm not going to cut away and I will stay close to the ground so you can follow along. You will encounter warpers, crab squids, and ampules. And you will need a Mark III depth module for your Seamoth, or at least a Mark I depth module for your Cyclops. Now, the way we're gonna be going is relatively close to the dunes. And if you're not sure what the dunes are, there are a number of Reaper patrol areas in the dunes. And so we're gonna take this path to minimize any contact with any Reapers in the dunes. We're literally skirting around the outside of it. So we're gonna come to this trench and if you look down, that's the blood kelp. So this is the blood kelp trench. Now we're not going down inside, not yet. On the right side, you're gonna see this rim and it's gonna start to drop down, but we're gonna stay right here at the top of this rim. And as it falls down, as you can see, we're gonna fall down and stay just at the rim. And the reason is because if you go all the way down and look, it's kind of twisty and turny and it's easy to kind of get turned around there. So this is just an easier way to literally drop down right on top of the entrance to the Lost River. So as this turns around, we're just staying on that rim on the right. Eventually this trench is gonna to come to an end. Just like that. At that point, you wanna point straight down and go straight down to the bottom. You're gonna find some wreckage on the floor and that's literally what you're gonna be looking for. Now in this area that we're gonna be going to, you will find ampules, as I stated, and crab squids. If we go right here, there, right there is the wreckage that we're looking for and now that we've found it we want to turn around to the southeast and there's literally a cave opening right here we go ahead and go inside this is the first entrance into the lost river from here if you turn left you can literally follow the brine through the lost river now, our second location for the Lost River, we're gonna be going to the Bulb Zone. Now, in order to go to the Bulb Zone, we'll be going to the Northeast Mushroom Forest and beyond it. First of all, a word of warning here, if you pass too close to the rear of the Aurora, you can encounter some Reapers. And if you move too close to the front of the Aurora, you can encounter some Reapers as well. First thing we're gonna be doing is going to Life Pod so if you have the beacon for Live Pod 12, go ahead and pull up your PDA and in your third tab, scroll all the way down until you see Life Pod 12, which I have right here. Go ahead and turn it on and choose a color that stands out for you. I would advise that you bring a beacon so that you can mark the entrances as you find them. Now we're going to be moving northeast east from zero point about two clicks right of northeast. We'll be encountering bone sharks, 
and honestly, they hit pretty hard. There are warpers in the area. And like I said, close, but not extremely close to a reaper. If you move too close to the Aurora's nose or the, the end, honestly, you're just gonna run into the reaper. And at that point, you got no one to blame but yourself. So be careful. Now we're entering the Northeast Mushroom Forest here. We're gonna go beyond this. I'm just gonna go over it. Once again, you will need your Mark III depth module for your Seamoth. Be entering the bulb zone very soon. things start to get a little dark and you see the blue bulbs and this arch you're in the right area and right in front of it this arch is a thermal vent we're going to continue on to life pod 12 once you are directly over life pod 12 like this, turn straight north and follow this way. I'm going to go over this sand and it's going to drop down. You're not going into the void here, it's just a big hill. You're going to see what looks like a little point actually. And if we come over it like this, it looks just like a point. This is literally pointing to the hole that's right below it. If we go over the edge and drop down, start to make out. It is a little bit dark here. There are a number of glowing plants that will help light your way. Now, once you get to the bottom, we're going to turn to the west and this big giant entrance is the beginning of the lost river continue on until you see the green brine then you can follow the green brine directly in go along here Green brine should be right on our right. Here it is. This is where it starts. And you can literally follow this green brine all the way. The third location we're going to be looking at is in the Deep Grand Reef. We're we'll heading towards the last Degassi base. So from here, we're going to be going south, southwest, about two clicks left of southwest. And once again, I will not cut away so that you can follow along easier. You will, of course, need the Mark III depth module for your Seamoth. And I really don't think you're going to get your Cyclops through this hole. I'll be honest. You will be dealing with Warpers amp eels, and crab squids. A little bit about the last Degassi base. If you have not been to this location yet, and you have not gotten your alien containment, there is one inside that you can scan. Now, instead of dropping off, we're gonna come up to the mountain here kind of try to stay on top you're gonna see how the mountain ridge just makes like a little path a ridge line on top we're gonna follow this ridge line until it drops off there's also a hole a ladder that goes down behind the alien containment that you can go down and there is the only 
spawn location for the orange tablet in the game. So make sure when you're here, you go ahead and grab all those things that you need. From here, it's gonna drop down. Now this can be a little tricky, and uh, actually what we're gonna be looking for is a hole in the floor of the, and we're gonna go through that. Kind of taking this direction, kind of take us pretty much right to it. Once again, I suggest that you bring a beacon so you can mark your own locations as you find them. Here's the hole right here. Also, it is easier to find this hole to get back out if you have a beacon. Go so down, inside we go into the deep Grand Reef. I suggest turning off your light here because there are crab squids. From here, turn due north and just go directly north. This is going to take you right to the last Agassi base that's already starting to spawn right in front of us. Once again, don't forget to grab your orange tablet from inside. From here, turn northwest and start to look down. And just past this landmass right here, on the left, you can actually start to see the green brine. This is where it starts. You can follow the green brine. Just like this. Into the Lost River. Just like that. So for the fourth location, we're going to be going to the Northern Blood Kelp. Now, all we're going to have to do is go ahead and open up our Beacon Manager and come down and find Life Pod 2. Go ahead and turn it on and choose a color that it stands out for you. If you don't have it, it's not a problem. Just turn yourself northwest north about two clicks to the left of north. We'll be encountering crab squids, warpers, ampials, and bone sharks along the way. And bone sharks honestly can, they do a good amount of damage. Um, so maybe a perimeter fence may be of some use. And of course I will not break away so that you can follow along easy. We'll be hugging the ground here. You should see all the landmarks as I go. We'll be passing by the Mushroom Forest in the northwest. And if you haven't grabbed any blood oil from the blood kelp zone or deep shrooms, I suggest that you grab some while you're here so that you can farm it in your outdoor grow beds. I'm going to come to this big mountain. We're just going to kind of hug the ridge here. following it along. Until it breaks away. And we can start to go down. Like this. Still going northwest north, two clicks to the left of north. Now, just inside the entrance of this Lost River entrance, literally just inside, is a juvenile ghost leviathan. So if you bring your cyclops, just use your shield generator and a creature decoy. You should be just fine. It's going to drop off and it's going to leave you right on top of life pod too. Now, right from life pod two, if we just hover over it, literally turn southwest, and you can see a big cave opening here. We're just gonna go right into the cave opening. You know you're in the right location, as you'll see a big blood kelp vine that stretches from the floor to the ceiling that you're seeing right in front of you. Now there's two ways to go here. You can go to the left 
or you can go to the right. And it'll be a lot easier to get your Cyclops through on the right, but there is a Ghost Leviathan right inside. Go ahead and go inside to show you. Like I said, just use your shield generator and your creature decoy. If this is your first time in the Lost River and you do not know what to expect, go ahead and check out my Lost River walkthrough that I'm going to link right here. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next time I upload.